Hi, this is Barbara Cagle from CagleOnlineMembership.com and today I want to bring you a video to show you how to do no-cost custom graphics that you can use on your website, uh, whether it's WordPress or an HTML old-fashioned website, you can use it on face these graphics on Facebook. And at the end of this, I'm going to show you some screenshots of some of the graphics I've made and used on my websites and some of the other things. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you something here. This is not a sales video. But I do want to show you how to do this quick and easy. Um, let's get started. No-cost custom graphics. What am I talking about? I'm talking about creating custom graphics for your websites using free software that you may already own. Now, let me tell you just real quickly how I got started doing this. Back in... Well, over a decade ago, I worked for a really big radio station in Jacksonville, Florida. And when they hired me, I came on as a temp. And I was only supposed to be a secretary fill-in, but they started having me do some, you know, quick um, advertising materials. And the computer I was set up on only had Microsoft Word on it. It did not have any of the graphics programs. Now, I did at that point know how to use a lot of those programs, um, Corel Draw, some of the other ones, but it wasn't available to me at this job. But they were expecting these things to be produced. They just didn't look at me as a, a simple secretary, which is where I, where I was when I went in. They did not know of my website background or anything else. So the first two or three days, I was taking up the slack and producing some really quick uh, marketing materials full of graphics. Well, within a couple of weeks, they hired me on full time, and my responsibilities for creating these graphics became more and more widespread. Eventually, I was uh, working with four radio stations with something like 25 sales people coming to me for uh, print marketing materials and I had to produce these things and they never did provide me with the graphics program. I was stuck doing this in Microsoft Word the whole time but I got really good at being able to put some things together. So what I want to do is to share, you some, share with you some of the things I learned uh, and show you how you can use them to make some banners, um, you know, icons, whatever you li like to do. But I'm going to give you basically how to do a banner and you can just all these techniques so that you can make whatever type of graphics you want. It just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of imagination, and a Saturday, rainy Saturday afternoon to sit in front of your computer and play. Don't be afraid of it. You can always delete it if you don't like it or not use it and store it for later. Anyway, let's get going. The first thing I want to talk to you about is what you need. I said it's free. Yes, it is free. I'm considering that you probably already have Microsoft Word on your computer if you're using a Windows-based computer. If you're using an Apple Mac computer, you would have a, a, something similar to that. It, in either case, if you do not have Word, you can go and get OpenOffice, and that's OpenOffice.org. There will be links later on in the video, and I'm going to also put some links up in a text file below, link below this video so you can collect those, get what you need. The next thing you need is a collection of photos or clip art that you can collect from either your own camera or scanner or various places online. You may have folders full of pictures. Uh, I do a genealogy website. I've got thousands of pictures, and I use a lot of the pictures in my banners and things. And I also go on Google, and I find royalty-free images that I can use and sometimes I'll adjust them, sometimes I'll take them as is. You can also use the free clip art that comes with MS Word or OpenOffice or that you can get online through clip art services. The other thing you need is a screen, cra screen capture program, something like Gene, Jing, J-I-N-G, or Auto Screen Recorder, and I'll tell you a little bit more about those as we go along, a little bit how to use them and how they play a part in this. The, uh, these are the links that you're going to need. OpenOffice is free if you need it. Uh, you can go to OpenOffice.org. You can get free screen recorders if you don't have one. Now, I use a little bit more expensive one. I'm a little bit further along the line. But I still do use Jing, and I still do use Auto Screen Recorder for different things, especially if I'm on a website and I see something I'm really interested in. Sometimes I just grab it with Jing or Auto Screen Recorder and save it as a, a PDF file, and there you go. Um, but there's also some extras you can get. If you are managing a website, you may want to be able to upload graphics and then change headers in a WordPress installation theme or uh, something like that. So some of the other ones you may want to get are InfraView. This allows you to not only can look at the images, most of the images that are saved with Jing or Auto Screen Recorder are in a PNG or ping, we call it ping format. Normally for a website these will work, but if you're using WordPress for example, example most of the headers and footers in WordPress are a JPG. So this InfraView will allow you to convert those uh, headers and those graphics that you make. It will also let you resize them and you can resize them without making them larger or smaller. You can resize the overall uh, 
number of bytes involved in the picture in in the video or in the image that really can come in handy to keep from bloating your website filezilla if you're not familiar with it it's an ftp program that allows you to upload things to your server and download from your server um of course if you don't understand yet about a web server and websites and hosting and all that uh, that's going to have to be another video i'm assuming that you're already comfortable with uploading things through an ftp program to your server um and if you are looking for information on how to do a WordPress installation and optimization, I have videos for that as well on my website at kegelonlinemembership.com. But uh, right now we're going to look at graphics. So the other thing that I have that I've found that's really a great free tool that you might want to use further on down the line, especially handy for pictures and doing fades and different things like that, it's called Inkscape. And uh, it's really a nice program. It's comparable to one of the more expensive higher end programs. So those are a few of the extras that you might want to pick up. So let's get going. I want to, first thing you're going to need to do is open your Windows Explorer folder and browse, sorry for the typo, browse, B-R-O-W-S-E, to the images you're going to use. You do have images, right? If not, you can go go and use the Google to type in something that you're interested for. in. For example, let's say you're doing a website about dogs and you don't happen to have any pictures of your own dog for whatever reason. Can't imagine anybody that has dogs that have pictures of their own dog. But let's say you want to do it about, let's say you have a poodle and you want to do a website uh, banner for Cocker Spaniels, you're going to have to go find images. So you can go in Google and type Cocker Spaniel, go up on the top and click on the images button and it will open up hundreds of images just make sure that you're getting something that's royalty free or that someone has posted and you know allow you to use you don't want to infringe on somebody else's property rights so and then you know of course the other thing is get your camera out run around the neighborhood take pictures of dogs uh take pictures of your own dog and you know whatever and save them and upload them to your computer the other thing I need you to do is, while you keep this folder open to off to the side on your website, on, on your I'm sorry, on your desktop, go ahead and open your MS Word or Open Office program. Okay, I'm going to be using Open uh, I'm sorry, Microsoft Word for this uh, demonstration, but um, you can again use Open Office, and and then again for those of you that. Uh, or Apple Mac. I don't do Mac. Sorry. I would love to do Mac, but I have so much invested in my Windows operating system for 25, uh, 30 years now. Uh, I started, I got my first computer in 1986. It was Windows based and I've stuck with it all along and I still have several terabytes of stored information that I still use. So uh, being a genealogist, it racks up fast, but that's one of the biggest reasons I haven't switched. I do use it for other things, but this type of thing, I've stuck with what I already know. It's more com comfort level and it lets me spend more time on the things that I need to be doing. So maybe in the near future, I'll be caught up enough that I can get an Apple or a Mac, an Apple Mac, and or, or whatever they're calling them now, and uh, go from there. But right now, we're going to use MS Word. So let's get going with this, and um, I'm going to pause this and open up my other screen, and let's get started. Okay, I am here, and I have opened my Microsoft Word program. As you see, I've got it open to a brand new document, and I'm on the Home tab. And I'm going to go ahead and get started here for you. You'll see over to the side, I have opened a, a file with website graphic files. And these are just some odd, file, odd graphics I've picked up or, or collected over the years. And we're going to use some of these to make a real quick um, banner for you. So the first thing I want to do is create a banner. So I'm going to go up to the top. And I'm hoping that my, let me highlight this cursor. See, is it on? I hope it is. Um, we're going to go up here to the top and I'm going to choose on insert. Insert. And I'm going to choose shapes. Now I have all sorts of shapes I can choose from. You can do uh, fancy scrolling banners. So let's, uh, you know, all sorts of shapes you can play around with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do a rounded square, a rounded rectangle. Uh, that seems to be a very popular size for a banner, so let's just take this in here. It looks like it's a full square. Um, the neck, and, and I have a plain white square, basically. You don't have to worry about the size or anything. We can adjust that later. Next thing I want to do is I want to click on this and select it. I want to make sure that I click on this and the little selection nodes are showing. And then I want to go up to the format tab. Now, if it doesn't jump over automatically, you may have to go over and look for drawing tools. 
I'm going to bring this down a little bit. You'll have to look for Drawing Tools and click on Format. And under Format, now I can change the different things about it. So I'm going to go ahead and use a preset just for the purposes of this video. But you can actually change the fill just by clicking on one of the colors. Um, you can create a gradient um, and choose the colors of the gradient. You know, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. But I'm going to go ahead and use a preset just for purposes of time in this video. But I urge you to go in here and just sit one day and play when you don't have anything else to do. Like we all have all that kind of time. But that's the best way to learn anything. So let's find something here that looks, uh, let me just go ahead and get the drop down going here. Here we go. It shows a little bit more and we can see a little bit what it looks like. And I'm going to change these outlines a little bit for you. Um, let's go something, do something similar to what I've already done. Uh, I like to do blue on my website and I think I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to take this one. It's a flat blue. Uh, the gradients, especially, um, this type of gradient gives your banner a feel of lightness. And even if you use a darker color, it gets it's it's like it looks it gives it almost a metallic feel or a shiny metal feel. But you know, depending on what how you want to use it, I'm gonna use just something simple. Now one of the things I do want to do is I want to make this banner high it and all I did was click off of this. And you see it goes back automatically to my home tab. But uh, I want to change this up a little bit more. So let me go ahead and click back on the banner. And we've already chosen our color, but what I want to do is the shape outline that's the outer edges of the shape I think I would like to change the color of the shape outline a little bit so let me go in here and uh, how about it just go ahead with black I could do a yellow but red orange you know you can put it show you uh, um, different versions of it as you highlight each color uh, so sorry uh, shape outline I'm gonna go with black so now I have my banner ready to go. Sort of playing, isn't it? Well, let's see. What's next? Okay, I need to put some kind of images or something on this banner. Well, one of the things that I like to do for my site is put my own image on it. So let me go in here and find an image of myself. Um, mm, here's one. We'll take this. It's an older picture, but uh, that the best one I got in there. This is the one most you're most familiar familiar with. I'm going to take this. There's two things you can do. You can either drag and drop this onto the page. You see it's here. Um, it's a little difficult. You have to, and I'll show you in a minute how to do that. But uh, the other thing you can do is go up to the top and insert. And you go picture. You insert your picture. And then you have to scroll it down and find the uh, folder you want. If you don't know how to do this, then we need to back up and get you some other skills. Um, so here's the same, this is the same is same folder I was just in, you see up at the top, it's the same folder I was just in, and I can scroll down and find that same image. You see there's a lot of images here, and there's the image I want, and I can tell it to insert. Now you're going to see it's behind the banner, so we need to do something about that. So while it's highlighted, I'm not clicking on anything. While this image that you just inserted is highlighted, I want to go right up to the top. Picture Tools Format is already chosen. If it's not, for some reason, if it's on the home, you want to go down the road to Picture Tools. It'll be a little small uh, tab up here, and underneath that it says Format. Then I want to go all the way over to the next to the bo last uh, box. You see text wrapping. Well, that's not just for text. That works for images, too. So what I want to do is go in here and choose in front of text. And you see now this is highlighted in front of my banner. Now, I would like to have my picture just a little bit bigger. Okay. Oh, that's not the best picture, is it? Let's delete this and go back and find another one. How about this one? And this time, I'm just dragging it over. I'm going to highlight it because under the edge, I'm going to format text wrapping in front of text. Okay, you do this a couple times, you get really good at it. This is a little bit clearer picture. It's not the same background. This was actually a wedding picture from 2001 when my uh, new husband and I are married. We've been together now going on 10 years. So uh, he was also a widow. I'm re just resizing the picture to fit in here within these confines a little bit better. Uh, one of the things I might like to do is have this blend in a little bit better. You see this black here. I can go up to the far left and it says recolor. If I use the little... Um, down arrow and open this up. I can go down to the bottom of this. I can recolor this, make it black and white, green, you know, sepia tone, 
uh, whatever. No, it's not that old of a picture. I'm going to just set the transparent color. So I'm going to click on set transparent color. It gives me this little icon. And I'm going here and click on that black and it'll take it away. Now it gives me sort of a speckled picture, but that's okay. I could clean that up some more, but for this purpose, you can leave it that way. It's sort of an interesting texture in the background, or you can change it however you want to do it. Let me show you what that looks like when it's not on there. It would be off the side. You see it's speckled in the back, and you could use other tools. Uh, you may already have a photo that's cropped out. I do have some of those, but um, for this purpose, I just want to let you see what it does. You put it on white, you see what it does. But um, if you decide you don't like it, then I really don't like that. I'm going to undo it three times. There you go. I now have a picture of myself on the site. Now the other thing I want to do is put some kind of text. Sorry. Um, that happens when you right click on your mouse. It gives you all sorts of options. I'm not going to use those right now. Uh, right now I want to put some type of a text in here to talk about my offer or what I'm doing. So I'm going to go back up here to the insert button. And because I want the text to be large and formatted, I'm going to go ahead and use Word Art. Now, Word Art, when you click on it, it pops up and it gives you these options. You can do uh, vertical text if you like, and let's let perhaps we can do that on the corner first. Okay, and I'm going to put click here. This is a call to action. I can change the font, and I can just go down and play with it. Uh, this is a smaller, thinner font. Um, you know, you just play with the fonts, pick out what you like. That's strange. Uh, that probably would not look good. On a vertical uh, vertical font like this, you want something probably pretty plain. So I'm going to go with click here in, in a plain, it's just Unicode Arial, it's an Arial font. And Ari you know, you want to use fonts that are okay for a web. However, because this is going to be an image, you don't really have to worry about it too much. So I've got the click here and it's set at 36. I think I'm going to bring it down to 24 and I'm going to have it pop in here. So this is what I get. And it's back behind that banner again. Again, we want to go up. It's highlighted. You can see it's highlighted because it's outlined. It has the little corners on it. I'm going to go back up to text wrapping. And as you see, you know, Text wrapping is not just for text, it's for everything. Now, there's a couple of things you can do with this. First of all, I can move it over here. And I don't like that, you know, I mean, the wavy thing is sort of cool. If you like that kind of thing. Um, make sure when you do this that you click the right thing that you're trying to move. And I'm moving the wrong thing. Let's see, I want to click here. Click here. There we go. Okay, you can also use your keypad to line it up. And let's say we want to change the coloring on this, so I'm going to go up again to Format, and then I'm going to go to the Shape Fill. So the Shape Fill is going to give me the outer color. Okay, you see this? Shape Fill will give me the outer color. Okay, I'm going to do yellow because that really pops. I'm going to leave the uh, shadow in the background, but I think I'm going to change the effect of the shadow. So I'm going to choose Shadow Effects, and there's a couple different things I can do. I hope you can see this to the right of this box. You can see the shadows moving around, and it shows you a little preview. Um, you know, you would probably would not want it to run off the banner. You probably want it to stay within the banner, but you can use any of these. Um, this is very tight, and you can change the dimensions of it. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is just leave the shadow that's there, so I'm not clicking on anything. I'm going to shadow color from here, and you see this box opens up. And I think I would like the shadow color to be, oh, how about a green, a pale green? What do you think? Unfortunately, I can't get any feedback, but uh, dark blue looks pretty good. Okay, we could do a black, green, gray, whatever. And I click off. Now I have... To click here, my picture and banner. Now I did move that banner, so I'm going to move my picture back up. I'm using my key, the arrow on my keypad to move it up. Okay, now I have a picture of myself and a click here, and I'm going to show you too how to combine all these into one. So don't worry about it. Um, next thing you want to do is put, you know, your offer or something like that in here. Let's see. Um, I think I'm going to add another quick graphic. Uh, I do some marketing online, so let me make a little graphic here. I've got a little man carrying a bag of money. I'm going to put him over here. He's pretty good size. I can resize him. I go back up first to the format, text wrap in front of text. And oh my goodness, he has a white background. So let me bring this up so you can see what I've got here. And uh, I'm going to use the trick to recolor to remove the white. It works really well on, well on this particular image. So recolor, set transparent. When you have a lot of white in a static image like that, it works really well. Okay, and now I have a little man carrying money. 
So I could have him walking across. I could, uh, I can also, another thing you can do, and there's an awful lot of open space here, and I'm going to just crop it just because it makes it easier and gives you a smaller image to upload. So I'm just going to crop this down a little bit. Okay. Once it's done, you click off of it, you have a little man. Now the other thing I can do, several things you can do. You can rotate this using the rotate button, and I can flip it vertically, rotate it, so he's laying down, standing up, horizontally. Um, but the other thing you can do, if you forget, you can just grab this little section here and move, and turn it. And a lot of people don't know that. These are little tricks, tricks that will save a whole lot of time for you when you start doing this. You know, I can do a banner graphic in about 20 minutes. Um, let me check here real quick and see if I can find the right folder. Uh, yeah, let me just show you one. I made this one. Uh, let me bring it in front for you so you can see it. Okay, I made this one for my Facebook page in about 30 minutes. It's just, I had a background that I, a, this actual background was a PowerPoint background, slide background, and I just went in there and took a screenshot, smaller section of it, and came in here and just very simply, you know, it's done. So, and it's a nice looking back at banner, so I'm going to delete that back out and go back to what we were doing. Um, but, you know, like I said, you can do this. So far, we have not spent a dime on any new software or anything like that. Just a little bit of time. I'm running in about 12 minutes here, so let me go ahead and see if I can get this finished uh, in 15, 20 minutes for you. So, next thing I want to do is add some more text. So, you're going to do the same thing again. You're going to go to your uh, insert, word art, and I'm just going to do something fairly plain. Let's go with the word art, the yellow here. Um, it normally will come up under impact, and I usually like to go to something a little bit um, less bold. Uh, let's see if I can find Century. Century's pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to do my text, um, my offer here. Um, create your own custom graphics. Or three. That's what we're doing, right? Okay, I can put this in here. I'm, you'll see this is going to overshoot it. Okay, you see it's much longer. Again, you can't see it behind the banner. So what I want to do is I want to click on it, make sure it's highlighted. I want to go up to the format. I want to go to text wrapping. I want it to be in front of text. That's probably the first thing you're going to do on every one of these videos. Video, uh, every one of these graphics, you're going to have to move things to the front. So. It's so plain, even against the blue, it looks pretty good. But I'm going to resize this just by dragging my little handles around. Get it closer to a size that works for me. Uh, you see it turned across here, then you can you can uh, select it. And I'm going to bring it in just a little bit more. Looks pretty good there. Create your own custom graphics for free. Uh, I do think I would like to change that. So part of the fun of this is changing it. So I think shape fill, I'm going to use a solid fill. Um, and let's stick with the yellow and blue theme. And then the outline, I'm going to do as a, I'm going to leave it yellow so it really pops. And then again, the shadow effects, I can change the shadow color. And I'm going to go back with the, sorry, I'm going to go back with the darker blue color. Okay. So it stays in line with this. Um, Maybe I want some text in here that's a little bit smaller. It's pretty difficult to get this small enough. You can do it. Uh, let me just show you real quick how you can get a very small word art. Um, let's do something straight, straight and narrow. And basically, this comes up as Times Roman. It depends on the font you use. Uh, I'm just going to take this down to, let's say, a 14. Use what you have. Use what you already have to create great banners and headers. Okay, let's um, make it one line and I'm going to tell it okay. And here we go again. This is way up top. I want to text strap in front of text. Now I have something I can't even see. So what I want to do is I want to do a shape fill and I'm going to change this to white. I'm going to go to the shadow effects, put no shadow. I'm going to do the shape outline also as white. That gives me a basically a bold text. I'm going to resize this a little bit more. Now that came out at 12 point. And you can see you can put this in there this way. The other thing that you can do is you can actually put a text box in here. So let me go hit there and do that. I'm going to go back up to the tabs. I'm going to do insert, text box. And what happens is it gives you a bunch of options 
options. And what this is, it shows you this is the placement on the page. And we're not even paying attention to the page. I mean, I'm not looking at headers or, or margins or anything. But what I do want to do is put a text box in. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to decide where the text box goes. So what I want to do is draw a text box. Okay. Now I can type in this text box. I'm going to go back to the home tab and I'm going to choose my font. Cali uh, Calibri 10 is pretty good size. And I'm going to do um, learn to make your own let's capitalize your own custom graphics today. Okay. I can go up and center it. Hopefully you know you have used Word enough in your projects to understand most of these things. But I just want to show you how they apply to making graphics. Okay, now I can leave that white banner there. It stands out, it pops. I could even change this to a bold. I can make it a different color. Let's say red on white. That's not a bad looking banner for a little over. Well, I ran my mouth a little bit, but figure about... 12 to 15 minutes, you have a banner that you can save and use on your website. Let me show you how to save it. There's a couple things you can do. First thing, you may want to save this document because if you save the document, you can go back later and change these, whatever. So the first thing we're going to do is file, save as, and uh, I just do it on the desktop, and I'm going to call it my test, let's call it my sample graphic banner. Okay, so now I know where it is. So once I save this as an image, if I decide I want to change it, I can open it back up. The next thing I want to do is I want to use a little program that I mentioned called Jing. Now I also do use something called um, Auto Screen Recorder, and I do have that. I don't think I can show you where it is. It won't pop up here in the window. But I do have Auto Screen Recorder, which is a very simple program to use. But Jing is very convenient. I don't know if you can see this up here. See the little sunshine up here? Let me bring it over. I put this at the top of the screen on purpose. Um, this is Jing, and it just sits up at the top of your screen. It can be on the left, right, wherever you want it, down at the bottom. When you hover over that, the little uh, things pop up, and it gives you a uh, capture. It gives you a history of what you've captured. And as you can see, it's probably going to, you can see I've captured quite a few things. Okay? And the other thing it's going to give you is your options, your tools. But I'm just going to very quickly run up here. And let's just say I'm going to capture this. It gives me a box. I can choose my capture size, uh, where I'm going to capture from. And believe it or not, this comes out with pretty decent little graphic. You've seen them on my website. So I'm going to save it. But now I actually capped it. Now I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it uh, graphic header one. And I'm going to save it. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. It keeps the same name. Again, I'm going to go to my desktop. And... Um, I just put it on my desktop. I'll find it here in a minute. Okay. And uh, oh, unfortunately, that's not going to work, but let me show you why. Okay. And I now have this graphic created. I'm going to close Microsoft Word. I'm done with that. And I am going to uh, use my browser. And you see, there's nothing on my desktop. Watch this. See all these little things that pop up. This is a program I use called Fences and if you're interested in this I urge you to go get it. I have so much stuff on the website. I'm running two computer screens by the way off one computer and I have stuff over on the other computer screen. That's where I keep grabbing this stuff off to the side. Um, yeah, I, I get take it all the way off the screen. I don't know if you can see it over here. I can take it all the way off the screen. Um, but uh, because I have so much stuff on my desktop, sometimes it's hard for me to find things. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my desktop, clear it again. Okay. And it tells you where your logos go and it tells you how to work it. So that's that's a little program I use that you might find, you know, might have fun with. But I'm going to go over to my desktop in here and I'm going to find this file that I just saved. And it was called, what do we call it? Gra uh, graphic header? My graphic header? Graphic header? Okay. Let me do this. Let me go to details and I'm going to go to image type and I'm going to go to date modified and that should bring it to the top bottom. Bring it to the top. Most recent thing I did. And that's the way, you know, when you get lots and lots of files, ladies and gentlemen, I have over 400 gigabytes on this particular computer and another terabyte backup drive and another computer my laptop holds 400 and something gigabytes it's nearly full that's why I don't use it much anymore so this is these are some little tricks that you can use to sort through your files if you have an idea if you know the name of it it's really easy to do it this way or if you don't remember the name but you know you just downloaded it today or yesterday or last week and you know the date um, 
and get this way. So that's another video for another time. I'll go into some organization tips for you later. Anyway, I'm going to double click on my graphics header. There it is. There's my header. So let me close this. I now have a header that I can use um, on my website. I can upload it with FTP. I can put it in. I can exchange it with the header in a WordPress installation, however I want to do it. But you know, this might be a little big. So let me show you really quickly. I'm going to open up a program called InfraView. And you see it opens up InfraView. And what I want to do, I'm going to um, close this again. Okay, and I'll reopen it in a minute. I'm going to go into the InfraView. It doesn't really open up very big here, but uh, let me see if I can get it wide enough. Okay, and I'm going to take my folder option. I'm going to open. I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to find that little image. It's another wise, nice way to do it. Graphic right there. I'm going to open it. There's my image. I mean, I've got my image. Now, this is saved as a ping. Can you see this? I hope this is a ping. PNG. I want to change this to perhaps a JPG. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save file as. Save as. Okay. And I'm going to use the drop down box here. And it's got bunches of them. And I'm just going to choose the JPEG. It's already chosen because I use it a lot. But if I choose the JPEG, you could save it optionally as a, a GIF, CompuServe GIF, or even a TIFF. TIF. If you're doing photos, you might want to save it as a TIFF because it's a little bit higher resolution. But I'm going to save this as a JPG. I'm going to keep the same name. And I'm going to save it. Okay. Now I have a JPG file. I'm going to close this. I'm going to reopen the JPG version. There's the king. Where is... Hmm. Why didn't it save it? Where did I put it? Let's try one more time. Uh, graphic. Graphic header JPG. And Oh, I see why. I see why. Never mind. Uh, you have to make sure you change this. If you're looking for a JPEG, change it to JPEG. You know, I'm brain dead these days. Okay. J there we go. JPEG. There it is. So I now have the JPEG file, and you see by this it's 845 by 220. So I want to change that. I'm going to open it. So I now have the JPEG file opened. Okay, everybody see that? So the next thing I want to do is optimize my image. So I can go in here, and I can resize or resample the image. First thing, what I want to do is I want to set the new size. There's several ways you can do it. You can do it as a percentage of the original. This is already highlighted. This is one of the easiest ways. It automatically changes it. So the current size, 845 by 220. The new size would be 676 by 220. I would probably think about putting this on one of my Facebook fan pages. So for that, I need something that's about 500, no more than 530 pixels wide. So I'm going to set the new size this way. I'm going to go to uh, the first, the width, because I know what my width is going to be. I'm going to set it to 500. And you have the aspect ratio is um, is chosen, so it sort of automatically adjusts for you. As soon as I decide I'm happy with that, you know, and there's some other things you can change here. 640 by 80, it'll do it automatically. Uh, best fit, I can set it as a desktop. The image you see on the background, my desktop cable, cable online membership, people helping people succeed, that was a little graphic like this, and I just blew it up to fit my desktop. So there's a lot of things you can do. Make your own backgrounds for your desktop. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and tell this to say, and I now have a smaller graphic. Now it's sort of skewed, but you know you can adjust that as well. Um, and you know it depends on what you're using it for. Like I said, you can change it up different ways. Uh, I can undo that, and let's say image resize resample. And I'm going to try again, and I'm going to do. Um, I think I'm just going to go down and do 75% of the original. That's going to give me something for a regular web page and do it that way. I might want to recreate this or just put it on the page full size and resize it that way. But there's a lot of different options you can use for this. And once you're done, all you want to do is click Save It. And I usually give it an ABC designation. So this is A. That means it's, it's been resized. I'm going to save it. It gives you a lot of options. But there you go. Next thing you need to do is upload it using FTP. Um, those not familiar with FileZilla, it's a really quick down and dirty FTP program. You can set up your quick connects and you can go ahead in here and put your quick connects in with your passwords and everything. There's a lot of, you know, there's your site manager which allows you to put everything in and I'm not going to show you all these things because this is not what the video is about. But it's a nice simple little program. It works really well. I've never had any problems with it. But um, that's it for this portion of this video. Um, I'm under 30 minutes so I did well. Uh, I'm going to close it out, and I hope you'll check out some of the other videos. Let me know what you're looking for. If you need something in particular done, 
give me a holler if it's something simple like this that I can do. I can do this in 10 minutes if I'm not explaining it or less. Uh, especially if I already know, you know, have everything set up. I can bam, 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 bam. I have done this while I was in the middle of a WordPress post coming in and made a quick video and, you know, a quick graphic and uploaded it. So if you need something done and you're having trouble with it, feel free to email me. My email is, let's put this up here for you. All right, where did it go? Oh, it's over here. I'm going to drag this over. You don't need to see my codes. Um, let me get to a blank screen here. There we go. My email is arbor at Kegel online membership dot com. Sorry, com. And let's see if I make this. Uh, there's my e my um, email address. You can reach me and let me know. You can also go to kegelonlinemembership.com and use the forums and ask questions that way. So I hope this helped you and I hope that you have a great afternoon. Look below this video for a text link to a page that will open up and give you all the links to those programs that I uh, highlighted in the beginning of the video. Have a wonderful day and let me know how you think, how you feel about this. If you want more of these type things, let me know. I can show you how to do PowerPoint and a lot of these other things. Banners and PowerPoint are really cool because you can do animation. So give me a shout out let me know what you think and i will be back at you bye bye for now